What's up everybody? My name is Big Cam. Welcome back to another Comically Boston Breakdown episode. This is episode 200 to Comically Boston. Can't believe it. But today we are breaking down episode 5 of the Penguin titled Homecoming. And this episode is phenomenal. Last week coming off of Sophia finding out that Oz was the one that actually killed Alberto and watching him unravel in front of her face and in front of the Maronis was definitely fascinating to see. Seeing all of Sophia's backstory in Arkham was fascinating to see. And, you know, so last week was the flashback Sentani episode. She, she toasts the family, Sentani, and, you know, that beautiful yellow dress and then she goes and skips through the house as she opens up the windows and airs out the place as she has wiped out all of the Falcone crime family which is just fascinating to see so we're going to get to see the aftermath of that episode in this but IMDB rated episode 4 of the Penguin 9.5 out of 10 and so far through four episodes episode one was an 8.8 episode two was an 8.5 episode three was a 9.1 and episode four was a 9.5 so this show has progressively been above an eight score which is to me a tremendous score so you know even the fact that they're creeping into a nine or even a nine five is phenomenal i would be very curious to know what this episode five came in at uh some people think it took a step back a little decompression a bit i think it, it kept its foot on the gas and keeps rolling on quite heavy and hot but we're gonna get into all of that today so just coming off of that last episode though uh she kills the entire Falcone f crime family at that mansion and except for Johnny VD and the niece Gia which was Carla's daughter so you know she's only got what two family members left between her and Gia and VD's kind of what a cousin or something crazy but I, I loved that shot of her watching Oz unravel and just watching his mouth just start to spew spit as she just kind of like hears ringing. I got the clip though, here. You. Nadia, you gotta listen to me. I never cheated your family. Jesus, come on. I need a Sophia to get the new drug. All right, for us. It's yours, it's fucking yours. Well, I was gonna bring it to you. I swear to God, you gotta trust me. I'm on your side. Oof, and that's right when Victor's about to come in and smash in, and so we're picking up this episode with Oz and Vic, right where episode 3 ended, where Oz is like, we're in it now, Vic, we're in it now, and they take off. Yeah, just how he, like, immediately turns on Sophia, and poor said Sophia's just like, are you serious? It was you? Like, and you just see the anger coming over her face as everything goes to shit and he just tries to talk his way out of it. Like, ooh, Oz is such a little vermin. And we open on a shot of the busted up front hood of the Maserati and it's all messed up. The hood's dented and the bumper's messed up. And this is from Vic crashing in and saving Oz in the end of episode three. And we hear Oz go to Vic. Have I told you about Rex Calabrese? Right, so the same guy that Oz looked up to as a kid that we heard him talking to Alberto about in episode one and Alberto laughed at him because of this Rex Calabrese and him wanting to be like him and he goes Rex Calabrese drove a golden Cadillac when it rolled down your street you thought you were special made a kid with a limp feel special you know like poor Oz is very sentimental about this Rex Calabrese <laughs> but we see Oz say a little a prayer for his car and he's like that was my chariot you know why uh, you know <laughs> he's all upset he says a little prayer for the car and then goes, ah, end of an era. <laughs> but we see him saying this prayer as he tosses the fire. And I love this shot of him holding the fire with the white and red suit from the episode three. And then in the background, it just burns as him and Vic have a conversation. And then Oz's goons show up and he starts like directing them. The thing blows up in the background. Oz just kind of looks and keeps it moving. Now this is a moment where I believe they go on like TikTok and see one of Sal Maroni's boys and sons is a uh, flaunting saying fuck you to the penguin or fuck you to the falcon or something he's getting a tattoo on his back. So then the next shot we see is Oz and his boys breaking into this tattoo shop and if you look in the background here you can see Oz is the one that comes in first and opens fire way in the background because you can see the white and red suit that he was wearing. <laughs> Yo, what the 
<laughs> the moment he finally notices it's Oz and he's like, hey, and the guy runs away from him. Oz is like, what the fuck? I was trying to do this whole thing without him running. And of course he runs, runs into the alley. Vic grabs him, throws him down. He starts to struggle. Vic punches him in the face. He's still struggling. And Oz like puts a gun right to his head and goes, stop moving. Stop struggling. You know, <laughs> like I love, I love just every line that Oz says. I really, it just inbreds itself into my soul. <laughs> The boy they're after here is Taj Maroney, Sal's son, and he's like, my parents aren't gonna stand for this. He goes, that's what I'm counting on, after he's like, stops him in the face. Oh, and then the title card rolls, the penguin in red, and then we cut over to Penguin at Blackgate Prison talking to Sal, and he shows Sal and his wife a picture of, a Polaroid picture of their son tied up with the newspaper, probably with today's date on it, meaning this is today, motherfucker, you don't try and think that this is fake. And Sal starts to like posture up and peacock a bit and fuck, fuck you, I gotta kill you. And he's in prison and, and <laughs> the penguin just goes, Jesus, Sal, put your dick away. You know what? Like... <laughs> oh God, so good. So Oz makes a deal with the Maroney's wife and Sal to, you know, hey, I give back your sons, you give me back my mushrooms, everything's gonna be cool. And she's like, you know, they're talking in a foreign language and he, she's like, we can't trust this motherfucker. He's like, hey, he'll be all right if you hold up your end of the deal. And then he goes to leave Blackgate Prison and he sees, he's like, hey, some people have to go, you know, there's shit to do. And then he sees on the news that GCPD reports gas leak at Falcone Estate, Sophia Al Falcone among confirmed survivors, right? So, and then there's just a bunch of body bags at the Falcone Estate. So, all the Falcons got wiped out in this gas leak and just, oh, Sophia's alive, no no problem. So now this episode is, I believe, the first episode that we see Sophia walk outside and just display the cuts on her neck, where previous episode she was wearing outfits that covered the neck. So now she's just like, fuck y'all, I'm not the hangman, but if you think I am, I'm gonna embrace that shit and show these cuts proud, loud and proud type of thing, you know what I mean? And we see Sophia get questioned here by the chief of police, police chief Bach, at Gotham City Police Department, and he's back from the Batman movie. I really love this character, the Batman movie, because he's got a crazy voice, he's always, you know, like, I can't even do it. He's got such a crazy, raspy voice, like, it's so far back in his throat, like, <laughs> Right, like he's almost out of breath. He's saying it so much. It's hilarious, his voice. I got you trying to accessory a murder. You know, like he's just, it's, I don't know how this man's even speaking. His vocal cords must be like shouting every time he goes to speak. I genuinely thought we were going to see Jeffrey Wright's Jim Gordon here for a moment. I still think maybe we'll see him later in the series and it will be worth it. But it just goes to show that Mr. Gordon here is working way more advanced than he thought, you know, this, this corruption in the police departments, because we knew uh, Carmine had a bunch of GCPD officers on payroll, and how high does that go? How many people in the police department can Jim trust? Really, Jim can only trust himself and Batman, which is a problem, and maybe that Martinez guy, the guy that uh, was gave Batman the Tucker tip he seems like a good guy but we hear this raspy voiced police chief go awfully suspicious the crime family wiped out by a gas leak <laughs> that's the closest i'm getting i'm not too happy with that impersonation but like comment below what you think but like so he calls her out on this like oh you're alive and everyone else dies in your family because of a gas leak and she's like turns it back on him and she's like hmm awfully suspicious the police chief comes to a do a crime report himself hmm? at the Falcone mansion she's like maybe it's just you wanted to see who's in charge now so you can see the deaths for yourself and pick and take pictures and laugh about it with your boys at the lunch table huh She's like, or maybe you're here to take the bribe money. He kind of just, you know, go, we're just doing our due diligence. If you see Johnny Vitti, give us a call. And his voice like cracked when he said it. I was like, oh. But then we see like, oh, what? yeah, why isn't Vitti in the house walking around as one of the survivors? What does she do with him? And we see that she tied up Johnny Vitti down in like a basement dungeon hidden somewhere, clearly, because the, the 
police didn't go and find this dungeon or wherever the hell they were. So she has him tied up in his underoos down there and she's dumping water on him because she's like, oh, it's getting very cold down here. So if you don't talk, you'll, you'll freeze to death down here. And he, she's not feeding him or whatever. So he's just like, you know, slowly getting tortured here by the cold and by water and by Sophia. We cut back over with Oz and Vic, and they brought that Taj Maroney, that Maroney's son, to Eve's living room, and she's pissed, and she's like, what the fuck are you doing here? And he's like, it's all right. She's like, he's in my living room, and she's like, I need you to fix this. And he's like, what? That's what I do. I fix things. Ah! She's like, the hangman is gunning for us, and he's like, just a bit longer, and it's me and you on top of the world, baby. Come on. Fix this? That's what I do. I fix things. Don't I fix things? You know? <laughs> so then Eve storms away and we see Oz walk over to the TV and go, Oh, members of the Falcone family are dead. Boo hoo. Turn that shit off. And he's talking now. He's dressing his crew that are all now in Eve's living room and with a Maroney. And <laughs> he's like, listen, he's like... None of them were friends, none of them were family. What do you miss, Johnny Vitti? What do you miss, Milosh? He wore lifts in his shoes, we all knew it, right? So he's trying to like make some levity out of this moment and they're all kind of like, we used to work for the Falcons and they're all dead now, Ooh, you know, like, he's like, they never did nothing for us. And he goes, why should we mourn them? If anything, Sophia did us a favor, one family down, one to go. And then he sends them all on their own little jobs and then he goes to Vic and goes, Vic, I need you to do something for me. And he goes, I need you with him with my mother I mean it's my ma you know she's you know she she's what keeps me good you know like in uh, that whole line I was like oh, oh I felt it so much because if you guys don't know me my mother is an absolute angel of a woman she's too much if she was a real cold bitch right like I would have been a bad guy a long time ago but because she's a good woman after have been through such terrible things in her life and she still remains a great person and funny and happy and a good, you know, a good soul. My mind keeps me good. That's a very, very real line. And I think many of men across the country can feel that one. Like, I would have totally been <laughs> it, where Oz is in this show. A criminal doing terrible things if it wasn't for my ma. But clearly Oz is a dark individual because he's saying she keeps me good. And he does terrible things. And this is what, in his mind, is good. <laughs> like, but hey, him and his mom have a complicated relationship. But hey, shout out my mom. <laughs> so then we cut back to Sophia talking to Vidi down in the dungeon basement or whatever. And Vidi starts talking about the night Sophia's mom was going to leave Karma. And he goes, she was going to leave him that night. And I was up the street in the car and she never came. So like even Vidi knows like Carmine was right. Like her, his mom is, so Sophia's mom's name is Isabella Gigante. And she was about to leave Carmine for all of his fucked upness. And Carmine clearly hung her and, and scratched her. She scratched his hands and uh, Sophia found her as a kid. But the bags were packed and Sophia and the kids and the mother Isabella were all about to leave Carmine and Carmine didn't ha let that happen and Vidi was going to help her. And v so Vidi feels bad for what has happened to Sophia, although he was also kind of a part of what happened to Sophia, but he, he really had feelings for Sophia's mom, Isabella. And he goes, I couldn't help you, mom, but let me help you. You know, like, and so he's he's getting tortured here. So it's still a, a moment where you're like, I don't know if she can trust Johnny Vitti, but he is getting tortured. He's got nowhere else to turn. So he might as well, you know, be here for Sophia. Why not? We see Vic make his way over to Oz's mom's house and, and his mom's house is a mess. And there's food, you know, stoves on top of the stove burning. And, you know, for God knows how long the house looks pretty messy and then he walks stumbles into her room and he, she's like he's like uh, uh, mrs cobb and she's like oh well, honey come here sit down sit down and like it starts to talk to him as if he's one of her kids about the baseball glove this was your glove and she goes i'm, I'm victor i'm the help and she goes i know who you are and just snaps out of it like but she was she seemed like this sweet young mom and she was delusional and the dementia really doing numbers on her and you know, Victor's here, Oz isn't. So Oz's mom starts to talk to Victor and she's like, what's going on? Wait, wait, it's my boy. And he's like, he's making a move on the Maronis. She goes, no, the Falcons are the bigger power. And he goes, Falcons are dead. And she goes, did he do it? And he goes, yeah. And she goes, 
you're bad at lying to me. And, you know, Oz might not have been the one that killed the Falcons, but he certainly pulled the strings to make Sophia get to the point where she could do something like that. So, you know, it, it wasn't directly his hands doing it, but he certainly had a, a hand in pulling the strings. You know what I mean? Yeah, the Falcones are dead. And she's all excited. She's like, all right, he's going to need my help. Let's do this, you know? And Vic's like, yeah, all right, whatever. We're cleaning up her kitchen. <laughs> and then we cut to Blackgate Prison. And Sal gets stabbed. And we just see him with a knife in his stomach. And this police guard stabbed him. And then we cut to Oz about to make the deal to drop Taj, the Maroni son, with the wife. And get the, the mushrooms back. And this gets crazy. And she goes, what did you do to him? Take that, I want to hear from himself. And he's got duct tape over his mouth. He's like, I'm doing you a favor. Your son's a real talker. And then uh, she's like, no, send my mom over here. Like, they check out the products, make sure that the mushrooms are good. And they were. And she goes, send my son over. And he goes, go to mama. And then a shootout breaks out. The Maronis kind of have the drop on them. But if this shows anything about the Maronis, right? The Maronis had the drop on Oz and kind of ambush Oz. But Oz and his guy takes care of the Maronis guys. No real problems. And, you know, Oz's team didn't lose any guys. And the Maronis, you know, now get wiped out. And then Oz, after they had won the shootout, drops his little lighter that he always has on him. The shot of him looking down for the second time this episode at fire, and then dropping and looking at this fire as it all burns. And what is it, what is burning? Oh, the Maronis. But I have a clip here. We see how Oz looks on in awe and just like loves what he's seeing in as he watches them burn alive and we hear them scream. And uh, if you were wondering like how I was at first, I was like, how did there was just like able to burn alive? Oz must have drenched this the Maroni son in gasoline because you see the trail that leads right to him and he goes up at first and then the mom's trying to help him and her big jacket goes up and then they both start burning but Oz must have drenched the kid in gasoline so when he walked over to his mother there was you know this trail of gasoline so I think this was his plan to burn them alive all along but there just so happened to be a shootout right beforehand that he wasn't clowning for. But hey, uh, they all survived and he burns them anyways. But, you know, just the little looks in this scene on his face. Like, oh, he looks so evil. His, and his nose looks so, like, beak-like here. And his eyebrows all aggressive. Oh, Oz is such a bad dude. But just his face as he looks on and just, like disgust but also like fascination but also like yeah motherfucker you shouldn't have fucked with me but rest in peace miss falcone huh jesus christ i loved her but every time she speaks i'm like damn that woman has such a deep voice she sounds like she's been smoking like 10 packs of cigarettes a day for like her entire life but maybe she's just got a deep voice <laughs> but either way that actress was great shout out to her and just the shot of him standing there with the lighter as he's about to drop that shit mm. i love i love the fits in this and his little chest hair poking out in the shirt and he's got just this all black like leather john wick mob type of going on but you saw right at the end of that clip as oz looked on watching them burn the fire suppression kicked on and the fire suppression if you guys know anything about that type of stuff it's not good for uh, most things if it gets touched by the fire suppression, except for fire, to put that shit out. But the mushrooms were right there, so I think the mushrooms got fucked up by the suppre some fire suppression. That was my first thought, because then we see them crash out of the door, and then we see that the mushrooms all were ruined except for two buckets survived, which is... A whole truckload, only two buckets. Yeah, Oz was not very happy about that. And so he just killed these Maronis and he only got two buckets of mushrooms out of it. Was it worth it? Maybe not. But then Oz gets a call from Maroni and Maroni has survived. He goes, you're cooked. I'm going to cook you. You're cooked. And he goes, oh, cooked, huh? Why don't you give your wife a call? <laughs> because she just got burned, cooked alive. <laughs> oh, <laughs> boy. And I love how Oz hangs up with Sal and he goes, You stole from the wrong fucking guy. 
Right, like the same thing he said to Vic earlier in the season. You stole from the wrong guy on the wrong fucking night. But now Oz is worried because he's like, oh shit, Sal's alive. I still got uh, Sophia out there. So he calls Vic and he's like, how's mom? And Vic goes, she's, 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 Jesus, Vic, how is she? she she's fine. Oh God. <laughs> you know, like he always gives him the confidence to speak when, uh, you know, the stud is going. But in this current moment in time when he's asking about his mother, he goes, I don't need the suspense of you stealing stuttering when I'm asking if my mother's all right you know like imagine he's like she's 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 dead you know and then he's like all that you made me wait for she's dead you know like what the fuck are you? you know like so I thought I just thought it was funny though she's 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 Vic she's fine oh god okay <laughs> so I says to Vic take mom someplace safe and uh Vic's like you know really cherishing this job and he's like look i'm not gonna let you down oz i got her i'm gonna protect her and you know he's doing his best but he's still a rookie right you know he's still a newbie to the job but as soon as he keeps saying to oz i'm gonna i'm gonna take care of her she i'm gonna i'm gonna watch it don't worry i'm like oh boy oz's mom is gonna die on vic's watch and then oz is gonna kill vic oh no i can't lose oz's mom and vic oh this show is gonna be dark and oh god I, don't, I really don't think there's gonna be a happy joyous ending by the end of all this i think oz's mom is gonna die and maybe even vic too and that's gonna make me very sad but we still don't really know what the deal is with dr julian rush and what his deal is with sophia we know we did see them kind of you know he was hugging her embracing her and the look they exchanged a couple episodes ago was just kind of like are they a couple what's the deal here I don't know um, he clearly has feelings for her I don't know if she has feelings for him but you know shit happens but we see him come into her room as she's getting dressed and looking at a nice fur robe that says Isabella Giagante on the robe so this is her mother's robe he says to her I don't know what happens next but whatever it is whatever comes next I want to be a part of it for her and so she, so now Sophia's got underboss VD rush and goons and she goes to address these goons and i love how she you know just immediately starts this conversation with i gassed the family and everyone's like oh, the fuck okay so the hangman killed her own family and i love her the black outfit she's got the scars out and about showing people like hey i am to be feared i'm not just a woman that you could do anything you want to and beat or hang like my father you know like I am ferocious and furious, and I might be the hangman in all those rumors that you heard, or I might just be something worse, because I'm Sophia Falcone, bitch. But, oh, Kristen Milioti in that outfit, like, costume department. She fucked me up all day, that fur jacket. She looks so fucking good. But she addresses the family and goes, hey, Johnny Vitti, all you guys here are not made men. The only made man here is Johnny Vitti. And she kisses him on the head. And then she starts to talk about how she is not a Falcone. And that she is a Gigante. And that she is going to change the family from the Falcones to the Gigantes. And the family that she has will be more friendly, more fair. She's going to, you know... Carmine made all this money off of you guys and, and kept it all from you and kept it for himself. Here you'll get paid more than you'll ever get paid before and you get paid what you're worth. And, you know, but she's the leader and this is now the Giagante family. And VD kind of starts to interject and she shoots VD in the head. And I was like, you're the only made man at the table. She shoots him in the head and then just dumps money on the table and then just goes, hey boys, you want to take this money? You'll be a part of my team. But, uh... You gotta know who's at the top of the food chain, and they're kind of like, uh, Miss Giagante. But I have a clip here of her killing me. Point on. I am a Gigante, and this is a new family now. What are you doing? A family that will not treat you like cannon fodder in a fruitless war against the Moronis, a war which I intend to end. All right, okay, Sophia. Let's not be rash here. All right, these gentlemen know we got a score we need to settle. <laughs> Ooh, so she's like, hey, I, I intend to end this war with the Maronis. And VD kind of interjects and goes, hey, we got something to do. Bang! Just right at the tail. And everyone else, like, you see the guy, oh, you know, like, he's like, damn, she just killed VD right in front of us. She's definitely the boss. And they're like, uh, Mrs. Giagante, and start taking the money for the guys that are, they're in. They don't have any questions. They're like, hey, I'm a goon. I'm a henchman. I don't need anything to do with this. <laughs> like, 
But then we cut over to Vic and Oz's mom, over to where uh, Vic is taking her for a safe place. She's like, where are we going? He's like, we're going somewhere no one would look. Crown Point. <laughs> so he takes her back to the neighborhood he grew up in, but also in the neighborhood Oz grew up in. And then they pull up, and this place has been the most damaged by the water damage, and also the poorest part of town. So they are the most damaged, and they have no resources coming in from the city to fix this, this or uh, clean it up or anything. So there's just people trying to clean up the mess, other people making more of a mess. You know, we'll talk about that in a second, because they pull up to like the front of the building, and she's like, "Ain't this nice VIP pocket?" <laughs> and he and we see Vic look over, and he sees his boy Squid back from a couple episodes ago and it wasn't his boy it was the the guy squid that was running gangs and shit uh with his friend calvin that his dad warned him about not to hey your boy calvin runs with that kid squid and he goes i'm just trying to go see my friends but his father was right don't fuck with those kids so we see squid is robbing buildings so vic's trying to avoid squid and he's like hey come here come here she's like who what the fuck who is that who's that and he goes you know, Vic just knows that he's not supposed to be seen here or anyone see him with Oz's mom because then that's going to be a loose end. You know, Oz's mom gets found by Sophia or the Maronis. This is real bad. You know what I mean? So Squid smoking big cigarettes. I'm like, listen, when a character's like really bad in this show, they're like smoking heavy and you're like, oh yeah, that's a bad guy. Like Sophia smokes, chain smokes, Squid smokes, and then we see Oz every now and again smoking a cigar. So it's like, oh yeah, there's bad people in this show if they're just like, yeah, we're smoking baby but squid sees Vic and Oz's mom going into Calvin's apartment and you know we don't see it whatever happens after this but this is a loose end this is not good and I'll talk about it more in a minute so they walk into uh, Vic's friend's apartment so this isn't Vic's house because Vic's house I think is completely destroyed and gone but uh his friend's house is still kind of intact. There's kind of remnants of people that were there, but kind of you saw like them packing up as they were running out. So they're staying there for the time being, you know, just laying low. And his mom's like, this looks like the apartment I had with my boys. I hate it here. You know, like, you know, hated it back then, but now she's kind of got dementia. So she's kind of like, you know, regressing back to this like time where she was before even being in the suburbs. She's going back to this apart shitty apartment she had with her sons in Crown Point. Oh, Vic looks across the street and goes, I used to live right over there. And she sees clearly that it's not there anymore. But Oz's mom goes, the east side is cursed. It takes everything from you. We see Oz come back to Eve's after, you know, having that phone call with Maroney and killing the Maroney's son and wife. And also, you know, still having the hangman Sophia out there. And Eve is pissed, right? She's still pissed from earlier about the hangman being on to them. And now the Maroney's and Oz is nervous. And just look how, like... It almost looks like his prosthetics are melting off of him. He's so sad and like wet from the rain, you know, and like, ugh, poor Oz right now. He's just down bad and he just needs some comfort from the women that love him in, the, in his life and he doesn't get any comfort and he just gets, you know, pushed away and it, it really, you know, you can see why something like this guy ends up happening because he's just getting eaten alive by the guilt and by the women that he's supposed to love him the most and, oh God, it's, poor Oz. So Eve... You know, he tells her to come with him, Vix and Crown Point, you know, we can uh, lay low. And she's like, Crown Point, I'm not leaving Crown Point. I'm not going to somewhere poor. Like, Eve's now bougie. She's like, I'm not going there. So she won't go with him. And he's like, after I've all I've done from you. And he's throwing stuff. And he's like, I'm stupid, foolish, I'm dumb. And she's like, you know, she finally does comfort him, him a little bit. And he, like, gives him kind of a little hug and goes... Honey, honey, it's all right. It's all right. You're going to be, it, you're on to something here, baby. I know you're going to be back on top soon, but right now I'm just going to hold you back. So I respect Eve. She's like, listen, I ain't going to no fucking crown point. And I'm very pissed off and scared at you for, you know, but she's a mother hen. She's trying to protect her, her girl. So he, she's like, listen, I just need a little distance from you. You need distance from me. I can protect myself. I'm trying to protect my girls. But you being near me is not going to protect them. And me being near you is going to make you worry about me. So just like you worry about you right now. And then maybe we'll reconvene if you get to back to the top or not. You know, like that type of thing. So I think Oz and Eve will be all right. But for the time being, she tells him to go without him. And he doesn't like this at all. He's very upset. And once again, earlier this episode, I pointed out that Oz's guys were able to take over the Maroney's guys without too much of a problem. And here Sophia's guys take over... Sal's guy is pretty friggin' easily because she's able to walk right into where 
Sal's sitting, so all his guys that were outside must be wiped out at this point. So the Moronis don't aren't really as strong as you might think, but the Falcons and Oz's guys seem to be able to handle themselves quite well. And Sophia here comes in with a gun pointed to him and starts talking to him and shit. She points a gun at him, sit down, Salvatore. And then she's sitting at the table with a gun pointed to him with her scars out. And oh, she's such a, so gorgeous, but also frightening like so Kristen Milioti is so gorgeous but Sophia Falcone is like terrifying <laughs> you know it's so funny how you know like, I'm conflicted I'm like god she's beautiful and I can't stop looking at those big ass eyes and how she sounds and I, I'm fascinated but then you like look at her scars and then hear what she's actually saying and you're like ooh, ooh, oh god you don't want to fuck with this bitch she could really do some damage and Sophia goes to Sal look at us both suffering at the hands of our of my former driver meaning Oz how Oz is fucking over them and how fucking over us and she goes I've come to end the war between the Falcones and the Moronis and Sophia wants to join their families join the Moronis and the Falcones and he's like kind of, you know, uh, apprehensive at this for the moment. She's like, no, join our families against a common enemy, which is one of the worst things Oz could have done is give his enemies a common foe being himself. So now they're going to be doing anything to get to Oz. And, you know, Oz has a few loose ends out there that they could get to hurt Oz, but I don't know if he would be so hurt by it, you know, type of thing, or if he just let it happen type of thing. But... So we see Oz make his way over to Crown Point and he walks into the house and finds Vic sleeping in a chair on the job and then he goes into his mom's room. His mom's sleeping and he kind of like comes over and hugs her for a moment and you're like, oh, this is kind of sweet, look at all, and they're hugging and it's like, oh, I thought the episode was going to end right here, but he lays down with his mom and goes, I feel like I let you down and she goes, you did. What kind of man can't take care of his own mother? Get off me, right? So like this sweet moment of him like, you know, comforting her and being like, I'm sorry, ma. I told you I'd get you a penthouse and we're back in crown fucking point where we started. So, you know, maybe that's where the title of the episode Homecoming comes into play. Either Sophia is now the home is now hers or maybe Sal getting out of prison is home or maybe... Oz is back in Crown Point, Vic is back in Crown Point, and they're they're coming back home, their homecoming moment, you know. It certainly wasn't no homecoming high school dance going on here, you know what I mean? So Oz's mom shoos him away, and Oz goes into the other room and starts banging around, and I was like, God damn, uh, Oz, Vic hasn't woken up from a single one of these noises, and finally Oz is banging around enough that Vic wakes up and he's like, I'm awake! Oh, 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 it's a, I'm sorry. I immediately just starts to friggin' apologize. And he's like, damn it, you caught me sleeping on the job. He goes, I fell asleep. And he goes, hey, you did good, kid. And then he starts looking through a coin jar. And we see that Oz finds this rusted, rusted coin of a Gotham City trolley, right? And it was an underground train system that was working and uh, used to be running through Gotham but has been shut down for many years. And Vic says to Oz that your mother said you used to live near here and with your brothers. And he asks Oz, you know, how did you lose your brothers? And, and Oz had been talking to his mother and she was like, I lost them. And he goes, I lost them too, right? Like, you know, so all this loss that his mom seems to be taking out on Oz, Oz lost those brothers too. So something had to have happened there. Maybe that car, uh, you know, Oz learning how to drive that we, he talked about a few episodes back to Vic. Maybe in that car accident where the car ended up in a ditch, maybe his brothers died in that car accident. Maybe Oz was had to do with losing his brothers. But Oz says the city took his brothers just like it took Vic's family. It was in Oz was too weak to stop it. So mm -hmm. that maybe implies something even deeper going on here that maybe, you know, the, the boys were lost in some kind of gang violence type of thing or Moroni's took them, Falcone's took them or something and Oz was too weak to get them back and kill the people that did shit to them type of thing. So that's why he wants to be on the top now so he can control everything and that type of bullshit, you know what I mean? Oz starts talking about his brothers, though, and goes, When we were kids, we would get into all kinds of trouble across the city. The city was our playground. And then we see Oz find that underground railway coin. 
and he goes, come on, Vic, let's go. And they go to this place, and there's a dog, a dog barking crazy outside as Oz busts off plywood that's covering up this tunnel entrance. And they walk down this tunnel, and uh, immediately I was like, ooh, underground tunnels. Are they about to find that Batman layer that we saw uh, Bruce Wayne in, in the Batman? You know, the waterfront, like... Uh, thing department that he was in there might be a chance here that they, he just stumbles across the bat cave that could be a big moment here for penguin in this show or even in the the movie he knows or could find out or possibly stumble across the bat layer so maybe the bat cave got you know put back to the wayne manor or maybe he found a new lo location for it by that movie but i don't know this could be quite interesting in Mick Giacchino's score, right, Michael Giacchino's son, Mick, has been doing the score for this TV show. The score as him and Oz, uh, as Vic and Oz are walking through this underground tunnel, just oh, really sounds so good. And then Oz finds a generator and he starts to pull it and the lights go up and he sees this underground area where... You know, it's kind of like a, a tunnel system, but it, it looks like there's almost like an office space going on down here. Like there was some type of shit going on down here that was like an actual system. You know what I mean? Like, and in, in not just some guy in, in a tunnel. <laughs> you know what I mean? At first, I saw the lights and the generator down there, and I was like, oh my god, they found Batman's lair. But no, this seems like maybe a different part of the tunnels. But either way, we see Oz all excited down there, and he's like, what would thrive down here? Vic's like, mushrooms. He's like, bingo. And then Oz kind of, you know, sees the lights and sees the vision for these tunnels down here, and he goes, look, this is going to be a new base of operations. It's going to be good down here. So Oz is really starting to see and feel the vision for this place down here and a place he can call his own where he's not working for the Moronis or the Falcons and it's just his operation with his guys and his troops and you know he can run shit down here. And I just thought it was perfectly fitting that the generator's running the lights and stuff and he's like a place to call my own it's gonna be good down here. And then the generator runs and blows the light bulb and it goes dark and then the credits roll. And I was like, damn, son, so what does this mean? And the credits rolled to the song Reckless by St. Vincent. So immediately I was like, ooh, what is Reckless? Well, Vic getting saw by Squid and Squid seeing Vic and Oz's mom is Reckless. And hopefully that information doesn't get back to Sal or Sophia. And then the title of the episode, Homecoming, right? What, who is it? The homecoming, like I said earlier, for Sophia, you know, she's now got her home. Or is it Sal getting out of Blackgate? Or is it Oz in his mother going back to where they grew up in Crown Point? You know, and he was all upset. He was like, I I'm, said I was going to get her a penthouse suite. And now we're back in the shitty apartment I was in when we were kids. You know, like, ah. Uh. So Oz had a real tough moment with the ladies in his life in this episode. And hopefully that doesn't send him into an even darker hole. But the trailer for next week shows this motorcycle ripping through the tunnels. And if you guys know from the Batman, that's what uh, what, what they called Drifter or Grifter Bruce Wayne did. Because it wasn't really Batman, he was just kind of a guy on a motorcycle, but he had a dark enough helmet that he was the Grifter Bat on the motorcycle. But I think this might be Vic now getting the motorcycle and, and ripping through the tunnels like Batman, but going to Oz's hideout, but just that one shot sent the internet on a frenzy. Everyone was like, what the hell? Batman's gonna be in here, that's sick. Just one other shot that I don't actually remember seeing in this episode, and I don't remember seeing it in the trailer for the end, so I don't know if it's in this one or coming up, but either way, I think it was this episode. I just don't know where it was. I'm gonna have to rewatch this more closely, but there's a great shot of Sophia here laying down in front of Alberto Isabella Falcone or Isabella Gigante in Carmine's Graves and uh, there's one open slot left, right, which is probably her slot, and she's sitting there laying down in all black smoking in front of it. And you're like, well, um, if that's not foreshadowing, I don't know what is. And then there's a shot of her above where she's laying on that table and she's smoking and just smoke pouring out. I, I love that they're smoking in this show and how much this show like is just willing to go that extra mile to be like, yeah, what the fuck is good? Like, 
this show is for real. And we're five episodes in and heading into that next week. It looks like it's going to be crazy. And the underground system is all over Gotham. So now Oz can just pop up anywhere on in Gotham through this system. Like this is going to be a very powerful thing for Oz to be able to use. And like I was saying, Bruce Wayne might be down there too. So we might bump into the Batman accidentally or maybe discover his base and take his shit. You know what I mean? Like that could all happen. And so, the, but in the trailers for next week, we hear Oz say, they'll be so busy with their noses up there that they'll never look down, right? So they're going to be looking up in the streets for Oz and not even think that he'll be under the, the surface the whole time. So, you know, maybe this will buy Oz some time with this underground system. But Oz just wants to take care of people and be remembered like Rex Calabrese. So we see him giving beers out to looks like homeless people and then he toasts to them and he goes, to take him back Gotham. He wants to take over the city for himself and his men, but he also wants to be remembered like a Rex Calabrese and he wants to be remembered and celebrated and not just this villainous feared character but i think that's where the show will end and it will be more of a this guy's a ruthless killer that will kill anyone that's in his way whether it's maroni family the falcons or whatever's going on there but right now he's got a problem he's got the gigantes and the maronis teaming up against his ass and they're gonna go against one of his two things that he's been reckless enough to leave loose ends for and that's eve his love and his mother and something's gonna go wrong there. Squid, I hope, is just a prick and wants to just, hey, what's up, Vic? And Vic can kill him right there so that he doesn't spread that information out to Sophia and, and whatever. You know what I mean? So I'm worried for Oz's mom. I really am. I like her, but she also got dementia. So I mean, wouldn't wouldn't it be doing her a favor a little bit? You know, uh, terrible to say, but it is what it is. You know, I know if I had it, I wouldn't want to be sticking around longer than I had to. But uh, Oz loves it, so Oz is going to keep her around as long as he, he can possibly do, you know. So hopefully next week they're out of Crown Point, because Crown Point's a little bit depressing, to be honest. Um, and I, I really want to see Oz get to the point in this show where he can get his mom into a penthouse suite or whatever, you know, and let Oz really be making a ton of money and get him to the top of the food chain, you know. Because as much as Sophia and Sal are interesting characters... They're not who I want to see at the top of the food chain. And then, you know, the city's still flooding and the underground system, like, I, I, this could lead to the Penguin really being the main villain in Batman 2, but I'm thinking he'll, he'll, he's going to be like a red heron again, and he's just going to be running the crime world, you know, underneath the scenes in, in, Goth, in Batman Part 2. But maybe a, a Dr. Freeze will be in there or a Killer Croc, you know, some something that some villain that strives in water type of thing. Uh, maybe a Clayface was rumored. Maybe even the Riddler and the Joker break out. And it's just them working together in the Batman part two. I don't know. Um, I'm still waiting to hear that information. Oh, prisoners broken out from Markham. You know, we did see that Sophia was released from Arkham, so maybe the Joker and the Riddler were released from Arkham too, but I don't know. It seems a little bit too, too soon for the Riddler to be released. He just bombed the city, and everyone knows it was him, so I, I think he's going to be held for a little while, but I don't know, man. I don't know. Maybe they, they're only holding the, the top, top dogs, like a Joker, like a Riddler, and that's why Sophia was able to be let go, but comment below all your thoughts on the Batman 2 the Penguin so far. What did you think of this episode five? I'm fascinated to know what you guys have been thinking and how you've been liking the show. Leave your score for it, like an IMDb score. Do I think this is a 9-5 episode like the last one? No. It's probably about a 9-1, maybe 9-0, uh, maybe even 8-8. Eight, eight. You know, all those are good scores and acceptable scores. And this was a, an exceptional episode again. And they're really stuffing in a whole lot of stuff into these hour-long episodes. But if this makes me do anything, it makes me go over to that Marvel shows and be like, hey... Come on, we get, get catch some of this vibe from this Penguin show and HBO. Let these shows be hour longs and doing the damn thing, you know what I mean? Because they clearly can and they don't need to be, you know, 30 minutes or 40 minutes, 45 minutes, 41 minutes, and then only six episodes, right? Like we're doing hour long episodes, eight of them, right? And this was a little bit less than an hour, like 54 minutes, but still, closer to an hour feels like a whole lot happened. And now we have six, seven, and eight. Three more episodes. Three more weeks of The Penguin. I am ecstatic for this. We have three more episodes of Agatha All Along as well, but only two weeks of Agatha All Along. So 
Over the next two, three weeks, make sure you check out the Comically Boston's breakdown episodes for Agatha All Along and The Penguin that will be coming out soon. Movie reviews in between. Comically Boston weekly nerdy news episodes on Monday. Stay tuned for those. If you've made it this far in the video, I really appreciate you. And the best way to support the channel is liking this video, subscribing if you're new, hitting that bell so you don't miss future movie reviews or future videos. And if you would like to follow my other social medias, links for all those are down in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you beautiful people in the next video. Peace.